Hi, I'm Cindy from BeDownswear.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a band on a pair of shorts. Sometimes when you're wearing shorts or you have a costume and it starts to ride up, the reason you'd want a band is it'll help hold it in place. Um, it's a really simple thing to do and it'll make a huge difference when you're dancing, especially if you're doing a lot of acrobatics in it. It'll really hold the whole outfit down. So if you want to find out how to put a band on your short, this is the video for you. Okay, so for this particular um, thing that we're going to do here, I'm taking a pair of uh, booty shorts that I already have. I've had people ask me, how do you make a band for the short? So one of the most important things is you're going to need to get fabric that matches. So if you're not making the short yourself, make sure that you can get extra fabric from wherever you buy the shorts or take it in and match it up. If you're doing a booty short, it's going to be really hard to get the color exact, even with uh, black or white. It seems like it would be simple, but it's really not. Another choice, if you really want that band, um, you could do it in a different color. Um, it's a really specific look, so I don't know that I recommend that, but um, just think about visually what will this look like when I get done, and if you have colors off, it'll look really odd. So the first thing we're going to want to do is decide how thick do we want that band, and the reason somebody would do a band is because you, it helps hold the short down without using elastic and squeezing in and really making the look leg look heavy. Um, so I'm going to say, let's do a one inch band. So I'm going to mark this at the one inch spot all around, but we're not going to, um, we're not going to cut it at one inch because we need seam allowance. So you can add, make it a half an inch seam allowance or a quarter inch. I'll probably overlock this because it's the best way to do it. You can use a zigzag um, stitch, but you'll want to really reinforce that. And remember to stretch it after you sew it so that none of the seams snap. So we're going to go half an inch, and then I'm going to mark down a quarter. Or I'm sorry, we, we cut off an inch, and then I'm going to go down a quarter so that I have seam allowance. Okay. So now I'm going to take the short, and I'm going to cut it. You want to make sure the front and back match up so you're cutting equal amounts of that off, okay? And then I want to adjust this a little because you know what, the band will just make it a lot longer. I like when it kind of arches up in the front just a smidge. And we can do that if we're banding it because that band will hold it down, it's not going to ride up. So remember. Now give the quarter inch for the seam allowance. We're doing that just in the front piece. And then you'll repeat that on the other side, just taking that little extra and ease it right in so it gives a nice smooth line and not all of a sudden a sharp, funky thing. Okay, so we want the band to be an inch. Oh, let's do this. I'm gonna cut this in half. Okay, let's measure this piece that we cut off. This piece measures at 18 inches. But we, you don't want it 18 inches because you might as well keep the one that's on there. I would recommend going about one and a half inches smaller on the Lycra. It all depends on the Lycra. So before you actually sew the piece, two pieces together, you'd want to take that piece, sew it together, fold it in half, stretch it. See if it stretches out a little bit bigger or if it keeps it snug. So uh, let's double check that again. 18 inches. Okay, so now we're going to take a scrap piece of paper. Cardboard is the best. And let's go ahead and we're going to mark a straight line because that's where we're going to get started. Now, sometimes I like to cut that away so it doesn't confuse me. Okay, and then if it was 18, we want to go 16 and a half. So down the center of this piece, I'm going to mark 16 and a half. Then let's go ahead and line this up on this line. I like the grids because it makes it really easy to see if your lines are going straight. 16 and a half right there. Okay, so that's going to be the length that that band is going to be. Now, how wide do you want that band to be? We said one inch. So it's going to be folded in half. You're going to need one inch for each side, that's two inches. Plus you're gonna need seam allowance because I'm doing the overlock. 
I'm doing a quarter of an inch, so that's a half an inch. That means this strip has to be two and a half inches. So we're just gonna go, mark it two and a half, and two and a half. Now let's go, pull that line straight, okay? Um, I always like to measure it up. Yep, it matches up. So now let's cut this out. It's good if you're going to use this pattern again and again, make sure and put um, notes on the pattern piece, okay? So let's cut this out. So you'll want to put the size, what short it is, um, because then if you're buying shorts from a particular place, you can buy that short over and over and over again in every color, and then you know this band is going to work for that every time. So I'm going to mark it. So you can see we have a quarter inch on this side. We added a quarter inch on this side. And then the fold will be right down the center there. And then we have a quarter inch on this side and this side. So when this is sewn together, you're going to sew that edge right there. And then while it's sewn together, you'll fold it in half. So you'll end up with a band like that where this top part is sewn to the shorts. And you'll wanna make sure when you sew that that you catch both sides of that and the short so you don't have a ripped situation or it looks like it's ripped. And it's really that easy to change a band, a pair of shorts and make them a banded bottom pair of shorts. And you can kinda of do the same thing at the waistline. So this just might be the video for you if your shorts keep riding up. So now we have some pins and we're at the sewing machine. If you have an overlock, uh, this is actually better on an overlock, but you can make it work on a straight stitch. I just suggest on the straight stitch, which let's go ahead and turn it on. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, use a woolly thread underneath and hopefully you have a stretch stitch or a zigzag you can do on it also. So first you'll do the straight stitch part and then go over it in a zigzag um, or a stretch stitch. Um, one of the biggest things after you've sewn it together, make sure and just stretch it and see if there's any things, uh, spots that snap. If there is, then you're going to want to make sure and go back over that so that when the girl puts it on, there's not a problem. So we have that strip that we cut and the pair of shorts where we cut it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that strip, put the, the right sides together here and put it there. And then we're going to go ahead and stitch that back and forth. Make sure and uh, stretch it. First stitch it straight um, without stretching it. If the woolly thread's on the bottom, it should give some stretch. And then you can really go ahead and, if, oh, so there's one that snapped. I'm going to go ahead and go over that. So we've taken and put right sides together on that strip of the shorts. And then we're going to go ahead and sew it. So you'll want to use woolly thread on the bottom or a stretch stitch. Best case scenario is if you have an um, overlock um, or serger, then you can go ahead and sew on that. And it actually will stay the best. Um, let's go ahead and cut this thread. It didn't want to do it properly for me. Okay, there we go. Uh, so you'll want to stretch that, make sure that none of the stitches break. If they do, go back over it now before it's all put together. So we have it created almost like a tube. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that tube, turn it right side out now. So that's the side that would be you would see on the shorts. We're going to turn the shorts inside out so we can work with it. Uh, the best way. Now we're going to take this tube and we're going to fold it in half. Okay. I like to pin the pieces together so that that way you make sure and get uh, it. If you don't have it together right, what's going to create is it's going to create a look like that on the band where it's pulled differently. And I don't know if you can see that really well. So you want to make sure that it's folded accurately so you get a stretch like that. So it looks like one cohesive band. It doesn't look all messed up. So once you've folded that together, you've got the seams together. Make sure that's nice and flat. Then you're going to put a pin in it at the halfway mark. Now you're going to put those pins together and that'll give you the halfway mark here. And make sure that's all lined up. 
put these two pins together and we have a halfway mark there. Now the, the great thing about this, uh, then stretch it and make sure it doesn't look weird, is you're going to want to stretch it a little when you put it on here. So it's just slightly smaller than the leg hole, but what it'll do is create a um, almost elastic feel to it. So we're going to put the seam together and pin it on there. And then we're going to fold the leg hole in half so that we can feel the halfway point and then pin that together there. Now we're going to take this and fold that in half, touching the center seam and the outside seam together. Then we'll know exactly where the halfway point in between that is to pin this on. And then do the same here. So that way as we stretch it, when we sew it, we will know we're, we're heading in the right area and that it doesn't end up gathered all up on one side or the other. So now we're gonna put that under the machine. Make sure all three pieces are lined up because if this bottom piece slides under, it's not gonna be attached properly. And I'm gonna hold it in that spot gently, hold it at the next pin gently, go even distance. And on this one, I'm doing about a quarter of an inch. And then go to the next needle. Then go to the next needle, go right over that. Keep it a nice, smooth line. And then keep going. Now, it, and then finish it off. Now something you're gonna wanna do, let's take these out. First thing you're going to want to do is stretch it. Make sure nothing snaps. Uh, if you have the woolly thread, like I said, it stretches. Um, you can now, if you're not comfortable going straight to the overlock or um, uh, serger from here, if you want to, if you don't want to go straight to the serger, then you can go from here to the serger and get that nice clean line. Otherwise, zigzag it, stretch stitch right over that. But you want to make sure that that you're not going way over if you're doing a zigzag because it'll show funky on the other side. So let's turn this the right way. And then there we go. Now you have a band on the bottom of your shorts. Um, and then, like I said before, play with it. If you see that you want this cut up higher, cut that up higher. If you want it to be longer, leave it longer before you put the band on. Um, this particular band, uh, I really like the width of it, but you might want something different. So, so take a look at it, try it on before you stitch the entire thing together. You can even hand stitch it once to get it apart easy or a really wide stitch. And then that way you'll get exactly the look you want. So there we go. Putting a band on a pair of shorts is really that easy. Thank you for watching our video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure and click here to subscribe because we're going to have some amazing DIY videos coming out. And if you want to get our free, complete dance costume DIY guide, click right here or go to bedancewear.com slash DIY guide. And lastly, if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks again for watching our video. And remember, be original, be colorful, bedancewear.com.